Today I'm going to go through a couple of tips that will help you significantly improve your renders. One of the fastest and most commonly used ways to improve your renders in Blender is to quickly add some volumetrics into your scene. As you can see, the volumetrics completely change the whole look and feel of my scene, and they really help add depth into large environments. Now, volumetrics are very easy to set up. All you have to do is add in a cube, then scale it so that it fits over top of your entire scene, then create a new shader, give it a volume scatter, and plug it into the volume. Then just play with the settings until you get something that you like. I find that plugging a noise texture through a color ramp into the density can really help make the fog look more interesting. All you have to do is darken the white value, and then bring the gray and the black values closer together. Then you can play with the scale of your noise texture in order to get a volume that's a little bit more interesting looking. The next tip is super simple and one of my favorite tips to help improve your renders. If you go over to the Render Properties tab and scroll all the way down until you find Color Management, if you go under Look, you can change the amount of contrast that your image gets. I usually like to go with Medium High Contrast, and instantly that makes my scene look a little bit better. However, I can stick with the base contrast and then instead play around with my exposure and my gamma. I find that playing around with these settings helps to make the render look a little bit better. And the best part is it doesn't add any render times. Here's a quick trick that I use in pretty much every single one of my renders. First, you can just add in a plane, scale it up, and set it up above your character or camera. Essentially, it just adds a lot of depth to the image by putting the foreground in shadow and the background in the light. You can also switch them so that the background is darker than the foreground. You can also give the plane a different material and give it a different color in order to influence the way that the image looks. Another common thing I'll do with this technique is add in a noise texture, plug it through a color ramp, set the color ramp to constant, and then plug the color ramp's output into the alpha. This way you can make a simple gobo that blocks light. I usually use one big plane to help separate the foreground and the background, and then use one large plane with a noise texture plugged into the alpha to help add depth to the entire scene. If you turn off the camera ray visibility under the object properties, you'll still be able to see the shadows, but you won't be able to see the actual object. Here you can see the difference that both of these objects make to the overall scene. Now one of the best ways to improve your renders is to make each object cohesive. Essentially what I mean by this is you need every single individual asset to look like it belongs with each other. For example, we can take this whole entire region in the foreground. This region is about five or six separate individual assets that have all been jammed together in order to create a cohesive looking environment. For example, we can take these rocks. This is how these rocks look in just their regular context. If I remove all the effects from the foreground, this is what we're left with. It looks okay, but the way that everything merges together doesn't look very natural. It looks like a bunch of different assets that have just been kind of jumbled together. So first I can start with the mud. The mud is a little bit too dark, so I can blend it in with a lighter color in order to get a result that looks a little bit better. Now, the rocks and the dirt look like completely separate objects, so I have some ambient occlusion being worked into the mud to make it blend a little bit better where the dirt builds up. And already this feels a little bit more natural. Let's take these rocks in the foreground as well. Here I have a simple node group, which is really just a mixed color node with a slightly brownish color. I can plug my original image texture through this node, then plug it out through the principled BSDF, and I can go about making it look like it's a little bit dirtier. I can change the amount of dirt that's on this by just increasing this factor. But if I start adding this same node group to every single object that I have, you'll start to see that they all kind of begin to blend together and look a little bit more cohesive. I can also add my ambient occlusion node onto all of these as well, and they'll start to blend in with the dirt a little bit more. Here, as you can see now, the ambient occlusion looks like it's got dirt everywhere where two objects meet. And this quickly starts to sell the idea that all of these props are meant to be together. Now, across all of the rocks, I also have this little barnacle shader that you can plug in, and it quickly adds barnacles to any surface. Now, once I start adding this onto everything, it really starts to bring everything else together. These barnacles are a little bit obvious in the foreground that they're not actually geometry, so I created a geometry node setup as well in order to instance barnacles across this object. And I ended up doing it for a bunch of different objects in the foreground. And once you start adding all of these interactions in together, it really starts to sell the idea that this environment is all cohesive and just really one piece. Now, there is one significant thing missing from this, however, and it's the fact that this environment isn't really cohesive with the water. You have to make sure that all parts of your environment are cohesive. So something I'll do commonly whenever I have water around is I'll turn down the roughness quite a bit. If I make sure my specular is up pretty high as well, it'll help sell the water effect. And something else fun that we can do is we can turn up the weight on the coat, and this will make it look like a thin layer of water on the outside. 
Now, I definitely want to do this for pretty much every single one of my objects. So once I add the coat right on top of the ground right here, you can see that it looks like the water might have been right up here only moments ago, and it's slowly starting to recede backwards. And if I just play around with the roughness and the coat, I can end up figuring out a way to get a scenario where all of this environment pieces blend together. Then I can continue to do the exact same things on the docks in order to make them appear as though they belong. And in addition, I can add water lines and such in order to make it look as though the tide has gone down over over time. Once I start to do the same thing on every object, it'll bridge everything together and it'll make everything look like it belongs. As you can see, pretty much any object that's touching the water has barnacles on it. In the end, what this does is it pretty much instantly makes everything look like it belongs together. Another thing you can notice is that the girl's pant legs have been darkened and they've been made less rough. This way they appear as though they've been in the water. I went over and did the exact same thing over on the docks in order to make things look a little bit more realistic as well. As you can see, we've got our waves coming in from the side as well. However, another way to sell interaction was to make these waves that ripple outward from the girl. Here's a kind of strange thing that you can do to make something a little bit more cinematic if you want. So first, if you add in a plane, you can give it a new material, delete the principal BSDF, and then add an emission shader. Now you can plug the emission shader into the surface and then give it kind of a yellowish color or really whatever color you'd like. And I'll show you what we're gonna do with this in a second. Now next what I'm going to do is add a transparent shader and then I'm going to mix these two shaders together using a mix shader. Next we can add a gradient texture. You can plug the color of the gradient texture into the factor of the mix shader. Then press Ctrl T if you have Node Wrangler enabled. Use object mode. Set the gradient from linear to quadratic sphere and then you have this little thing. And now if we add a color ramp we can darken this white value so that we just get kind of a light color right here that is uh, transparent, but also uh, displays a little bit of a, a glow. And then what we can do with this is if we set the emission up correctly and then we can scale it quite large, we can essentially make these big sunbeams that you can just drag and drop and put anywhere. So if you ever really are trying to make God rays but the volumetrics aren't really doing what you want them to do, you can always just do something like this and essentially you can create these cinematic god rays if you want without actually having to create god rays. If you want to as well, you could also make some kind of vignettes. Essentially, it's really up to you whatever you want to do. I've used this effect a few times as you can see right here. It's a nice effect that you can use to kind of cheaply add some god rays into your scene and just make things look a little bit more cinematic. There's a few tips and tricks that I use pretty often to try and make things more cinematic. If you want to see how I built this entire scene here, you can go to my Patreon where I'll have a full breakdown video. Also, be sure to check out my Gumroad if you want to download any of the node groups that you see in this. Over on Gumroad, I have the Simple Dust node group, I have the Ambient Occlusion node group, the Barnacle node group, and I have the Water Lines node group, all available for you to use. They're very, very simple, pretty much just drag and drop, and they can add quick and dirty details onto anything. Also, let me know what you want to see next, and I'll make it for you in the next videos.